The first law is that everyone in politics exaggerates everything all of the time, <laughs> without exception. The second law, which I'm sure our councillors will be nodding furiously when they hear it, is no one ever complains about consultation when they like the outcome. The third law is that the further away from responsibility you are, the more left wing you are. And finally, and I'm in the market for further laws, if anybody's got any suggestions I'm very open to them because I think maybe if I've got eight or ten it will be even more impressive, but I've only come up with four so far, but the fourth is that when organisations are lobbying politicians to support their point of view, to support a particular proposal or an idea or a position on an issue, if they think they've got public opinion on their side, they talk about democracy. If they don't, they talk about leadership. Most politicians understand that that word leadership is code for commit political suicide. And that's one of the reasons why you don't often have politicians displaying leadership. If I'm a politician, I need the media, full stop. Without it, without that publicity, without that access to the mass audience, I die, I do not exist. And the problem for the politician is that he or she doesn't set the terms of engagement. The media do. The media decide whether or not something I say or do is worthy of reporting, and they also decide how it's reported, whether it's accurately conveyed, twisted, distorted, manipulated, and I have virtually no control over that. The problem we now face in this country is that the connection between the public face of politics and the issues that are at the heart of the future of the country is slowly separating. So more and more, what you all see in the public domain is Tony Abbott in speedos, or riding a quad bike, or Julia Gillard crying or not crying, and other such fundamentally important matters that of course are absolutely central to the future of the country. What you don't see is a serious reporting of the big issues in play and how they propose to deal with them and the points of difference and the arguments as to why we should go down a particular path and not another path. And what, where that ultimately takes us is the prospect of having the question of who governs our nation decided by what you think about how Tony Abbott looks in speedos. That's the logical conclusion of this process.